group audit group audit hello everybody my name is Bengala Tinji depending on where we live that is depending on country we live the definition of what a group is may be a bit may be influenced by where we live but based based on accounting practices and the basic definition when we heard it many organizations as a singular entity will say they are a group of companies so a group of company could comprise of subsidiaries associates and all these names actually could be redefined based on international financial reporting standard and any other applicable accounting standard but irrespective like when we say a group of companies in nigeria we are talking about at least three entities three basically there must be at least three entities companies organizations that have come together to become one if they are not up to three they could not be called a group of companies so that was why i started by saying depending on where we live or con country we come from or hearing name from but a group audits simply put we can say a group audit is audit of a parent company and its subsidiaries audit of a parent company and its subsidiary so basically that is what a group audit is so when we are talking about group audit there are a lot of other things that we must talk about so today we'll be looking at joint audit too but we should know that joint audit is different from group audit we shall also look at what a component is and what a comp what makes a component significant and others not significant we are going to look at letter of instructions and what are the contents of a letter of instruction so these are some of the things that we are going to be looking at today group engagement the group engagement partner group engagement team so these are some of the things that we will be looking at today and this topic is governed by isa 600 ISC 600 that is international standard on auditing 600 governs everything about group audit when we are talking about group audit we cannot but mention component audit we cannot but mention component audit so who is a component a component basically can be said to be any unit of organization within a group a component is a unit of organization within a group so it could be a subsidiary it could be an associate but like i mentioned three organization according to complaint registration act in nigeria must come together to form a group so those three organizations are in themselves components so in those three now we must have one that will be like the leading organization which we are going to call the parent company then we have the remaining two to be components of the group so in a group we will have a parent company who is going to take like the lead the lead organization within the group 
then we are going to have components like the example excited the remaining two organizations are components it is important for us to stress it that even though they are components they are separate legal entity in themselves able to sue and be sued and components too should be audited or must be audited because they are an organization they should they have the life of themselves and they should be able to be accountable to the government in form of revenue made and the like and tax returns so components too we have component auditor just like the group organization we have group auditor so we'll have component auditors and we'll have group auditor we will have component auditors and we will have group auditor so a component auditor is an auditor that audits evaluates verify independently examines the book of the component organization and the component like i said could be a subsidiary and associates even a joint venture so in group a we have component b component c so the auditor of component b is a component auditor the component the auditor of component c is a component auditor so a component is within the group just like a content will always be in the container okay so how are we now going to measure the significance of a component because when we are auditing generally we must plan audit plan must go ahead so in audit planning we ensure resources are channeled optimally and that we do not overlook things that are of importance to the sources of the audit so and one of which is ensuring a significant component is not overlooked when we are talking about group audits so how are we going to ensure significant components is not overlooked in a group audit basically a significant component are contributors they are contributors to the group but when we are talking about the contribution we should not limit ourselves to resources contribution in form of revenue turnover and the like which may be but a component could be significant in form of know-how if a component has a technical know-how within a group that is unique that others may not have within the group then that uniqueness make them to become significant so they become significant components so also they could be a risk contributor to the group that is they are in an industry or for whatsoever risk for whatsoever reason rather they are contributing risk that is the risk in that component or in that entity could not be neglected because it can affect the performance or it will affect the performance general performance of the group as a whole so when we are talking about significant components they are those that are of individual significance to the group maybe in material context like i said turnover but not necessarily maybe in form of risk that they are contributing to the organization or the group as a whole so when an auditor is planning we must have knowledge of which component has all these criteria and we must plan towards how we are going to evaluate their activities within the group very well it is important so 
what is group engagement team just like the normal audit in which we audit an entity now we are talking then we will be talking about audit team but now we are talking about group engagement team that is group audit team now so basically in a team there must be a leader unlike before that we have engagement partner as the team lead of a singular audit we will be talking now about the group engagement partner group engagement partner which may be a partner from parent complaints audit but not necessarily and i need to emphasize this that a parent auditor audits the parent does not necessarily mean that the auditor is going to be or become the group auditor they may be they may not be and we are going to get to that soon so that we'll be able to flesh it out very well the group engagement team is the audit team responsible for the audit of group financial statement as a whole both the parent company and the components within it so the group engagement team must ensure that they give a singular opinion concerning the organization the group as a whole and the group engagement partner is going to take the lead leading the group engagement team so the group engagement team must strategize i want to believe we still remember audit strategy memorandum which we can equally call audit planning memorandum so for group two we must plan and we must document our plan so there will be an apm or asm for group audit and the group engagement team is responsible to ensure availability of the group APM or group ASM audit strategy memorandum also they must ensure that they communicate with component auditors don't forget now that there are other organizations within the group that we are auditing together as one so the group engagement team must ensure and communicate to other people that is auditors too so they, as they are planning they must plan equally about the communication how are they going to communication and reach out to component auditors don't forget that they must express their singular opinion at the end of the day on the component auditors work too also they must perform consolidation of the financial statement they must plan on how to consolidate the accounts of the group and which is made up of several units or several legal entity businesses coming together as a group of companies so they must be able to plan towards these that i've mentioned and also they must be able to conclude of having evaluated everything that they, they could draw upon during in the course of the field work that is in the course of executing the audit on the field they must be able to conclude whether the group as a whole the financial statement is true and fair is well presented or not if there are issues and like so they must be able to express a singular and independent opinion and this aspect of their work they will not be able to achieve it if they will not be able to work together effectively with component auditors and evaluate their work and the like and come up with a singular objective opinion as to the truthfulness and fairness of presentation of fairness of accounting entries of business activity conducted within the year under review 
so they need a group auditor must work together with a component auditor or components auditors so the relationship between the group auditor and component auditor must be cordial and they must plan toward establishing it an effective business relationship must exist with, with between the two of them so as the group auditor is planning they must equally plan to to understand and to know to what extent are they going to use the component auditors to work how are they going to evaluate it for reliance and the like because at the end of the day they are solely responsible for the opinion and the conclusion reached and the expression of their opinion on the group audit even though they are not going to be the only contributor that is they are not going to be the only auditor on the engagement but at the end of the day they will solely be responsible for the opinion and the conclusion reached so a group auditor must be careful and be ready to work maximally for the purpose of ensuring misstatement of opinion is to the barest minimum not allowed to happen so therefore the group engagement partner is responsible for the direction of the group audit he or she supervises it and the performance of the group audit is the responsibility and sole responsibility of the group engagement partner he or she also must write the reports or sign up the accounts issuing an appropriate group audit report so nobody is going to do this for him or her it takes full full responsibility for the conclusion reached and the opinion expressed let us move on to how are we going to as auditor accept a group audit engagement accepting an appointment as group auditor and we should not forget where we are coming from an auditor must accept to audit an organization and the clients usually will give us appointment letter while we too will reciprocate by giving them letter of engagement letter of engagement usually we use it to communicate and ensure that we close as much as possible the expectation gap all this that i've mentioned the expectation gap that is a video for it if we want to learn more and the like because we are an audit of a group account now and to a greater extent we've covered a lot when it comes to advanced audit skill so please check it up as we continue it is a normal practice usually for a parent auditor to become a group auditor but we should please know that it's a separate appointment group audit is an appointment on its own and being an auditor of a parent company is a separate appointment on its own so it does not necessarily mean therefore that a parent organization auditor automatically becomes that of a group audit but many times it could happen but i'm emphasizing that they are separate appointments and they should be looked at that way because for an auditor to become a group auditor even though they are formerly or recently they are group parent auditors rather but care must be taken they need to ask themselves question that do they have the capacity do they understand the group 
as a whole, not a parent organization now, because majority of the time, the parent organization usually are like an administrative organization. I don't want to use the word administrative office. It is basically the, the, uh, the it's a formal organization to fund other organizations within the group. So that an auditor could hold it that particular organization, which we call parent now, does not necessarily qualify them to be the to be the group auditor rather. So to be a group auditor, it takes another level of technicality, another level of understanding the organization as a whole. Now we are talking about group that will be made up of nothing less than three organizations. So understanding them, understanding how the components operate, understanding how they communicate within the group, understanding the industries in which they are, the group auditor that want to take up the appointment of a group audit must be able to answer series of questions. Do they have capacity to uh, resources to, for, to deliver the audit? Because audit requires level of resources, competence, staffing, meeting the deadline and the like. So these are some of the aspects that a group auditor must be able to answer before taking up appointment of a group auditor. So they must obtain understanding of the group and its components, the environment they operate, the industry they operate. They must know which component is significant within the group and why are they significant. Like I mentioned before, they could be significant because of the risk they are contributing, they could be significant because of technical know-how, they could be significant because of maybe the turnover that they are contributing to the organization and so many other factors who made them to become significant components. So who is auditing the components? They must, they must know. Are they, are they organization? Are they firms of accountancy that they can work together and they can work with? What are their level of compliance and technicality? What is their the background of component auditors work? What is their reputation? What are they known for in the world of accounting and the like? A group auditor must be able to answer this because it's going to affect and influence their work. So before they go into it, they must know whether a group auditor will be able to get involved maximally in the work of the component auditor. It's important for them to know, would they be able to work effectively with other auditors that will be involved, even though the group auditor is going to be in charge and lead the pack. Let us move on to understanding the group, its components, and component auditor. So, for us to take appointment as group auditor, the group auditor must understand the group. Now, we are not talking that about the group auditor understanding the parent company. We are talking that about the group auditor must understand the group the component within the group relate well with the group auditor. So the group auditor must familiarize himself, himself or herself with the work or the workings of the component auditor. How compliant are they when it comes to accounting regulations, laws and orders, and other necessary things. Would they be able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence from them? Do they work or have branches that can easily reach out to the group branch around the area that the group is located? 
these and many more questions must be asked before taking up appointment the group auditor must be ready and ask themselves would they be able to deliver the job at the right and appropriate time because this too is key and paramount would they be able to get the job done as expected because if they will not be able to meet the deadline it's possible for the client to transfer the penalty especially if the client operates in a regulated environment and they will be penalized for late submission so they will transfer and deduct the penalty from the audit fee especially if the audit fee is a bit fair and large to absorb the penalty that the client will be penalized if peradventure the audit report will not be submitted on time so the group auditor before taking up the appointment must be able to ensure that they have capable resources in capable hands and resources to be channeled towards it and ensure prompt delivery of the audit report they must familiarize themselves with the group who said that the another thing they must do is they must set components materiality level remember materiality level so this is the acceptable level of risk that the auditor is ready to bear outside it the auditor will do a lot of substantive and extensive substantive testing to ensure that misstatements are narrowed down so even in group audits the group auditor must be able to plan towards component materiality and ensure that the component auditor adhere to this and they must communicate the materiality level even to the component auditor they must equally be able to ascertain the client's timetable when are we going when are we expected to deliver the report who and who will be available who and who do we need to speak with as regards this audit would they be available when are they are they going to be on leave and the like so all this scheduling they are important to delivery of group audits group auditor must know risky area within the group and must plan towards auditing them effectively and having audit them they must ensure risk are narrowed down and in, in the planning document the APM who that is staff assigned to that risky caption must be named so that when they get to field it's not that nobody's taking responsibility for that aspect so the group engagement partner must ensure deliberately the name of the person assigned and which the person must be knowledgeable highly knowledgeable audit staff to examine and evaluate that risky aspect of the audit so let us go a bit deeper into group audit group audit is a bit peculiar and unique and one of its uniqueness is that many auditors are working together for one purpose and one of them must take the lead in which we call the group auditor so because of this peculiarity it is important that they establish a formal understanding and a formal means of communicating unlike singular audits that could be conducted we have a peculiar letter when it comes to group audits we call it letter of instruction so a letter of instruction is used by the group auditor to communicate their mind their plan the program and their expectation towards 
the component auditor. So a letter of instruction is used to communicate officially between the group auditor and the component auditor, letting the component auditor understand the expectations of the group auditor and the deliverable. And having done all, the component auditor at the end of the day too must be able to submit their report or a memorandum of work performed or report of work done or work performed back to the group auditor. This is to ensure former understanding, former communication and taking responsibility for the aspects that component auditors have contributed to the group audit. So a letter of instruction will be required when we are talking about audits of a group company. So that letter will communicate the mind of the group auditor and expectation areas they want to be done and how the component auditor should go about it and how they are going to use the work of the component auditor. So these are key things that must be in the letter of instruction and letter of instruction make it another unique form of exercise which we may not find in other singular audit work of an entity. Other important aspects of letter of instruction that we are going to find is the letter should contain like a formal request appealing to the components of auditor for their cooperation. Also admonishing them to comply with ethical guidelines, ethical regulation and like even though they are all auditors and professionals in their own right and capacity but formally to communicate as expectation they must let them know that they need their cooperation they will value it that they operate ethically and follow ethical guideline and principle of the profession also communicate component materiality formally also identify significant risk areas in the operations of components activities and businesses also if during the time they were planning the group auditor could understand or probably were given a list of related parties should make it available to component auditors too so that they can be on the lookout to ensure transactions even from the side of components are conducted at arm's length. So the list of related parties will be part of what they are going to put in the letter of instruction. So for letter of instruction I've mentioned quite a few. I say a letter of instruction is a series of instruction passed on from the group auditor to the component auditor stating their expectation as it requires the work to be done, the materiality level of work to be performed, the cooperation, the ethical requirements, significant areas and related parties that they may be on the lookout for. So having received letter of instruction and the work is already executed, the component auditor must come back with a memorandum of work performed or report on work performed. And when we are talking about report of work performed, what should be component of it. So that is what we are going into. 
what are the content of report of work performed or memorandum of work done as we may equally call it so there should be a statement of compliance don't forget in the letter of instruction the auditor group auditor was telling them to comply with ethical requirements so in work performed to in the report of work performed to the component auditor should be able to reiterate that they've complied ethically with the requirements and these are the work done so there should be like a statement of compliance with ethical requirements and group auditors requirements identification of financial information too on which the component auditor is reporting so they should be able to present the financials too that okay this is what we've worked on if there are any instances of non-compliance audit observations and the like they should be able to state it that these are audit observations maybe in form of process weakness internal control weakness and maybe control environment generally they should be able to specify it that okay these are their observations and if there are proposals that is way of doing it right that they propose they should be able to include it if they are audit adjustments in the course of their work they should be able to include the audit adjustments and if there are misstatements in which the management of your component is disagreeing with the component auditor they should be able to specify it too reason being that the group auditor will be able to follow it up but if they are silent or need well the group auditor might have not known or come to their knowledge and they may not be able to action it so it's important that the state areas like this and they expect their expectation for follow-up from group auditor also part of what they should talk about about their work is or her matters that may be relevant to group auditors decision so in the course of their work they've examined a lot of things they should be able to advise and guide the group auditor who is not available on component audit material weaknesses in the control in the internal control observed they should be able to state it governance matter if there are management biases or management even override process and the like they should be able to state it in the report of work performed overall findings and their conclusion and like i always say when we are concluding our audit reports we must ensure we tie it to the audit objective so the conclusion they must reach a conclusion with as regards the component auditors audit reports and they must express it in writing too using the vehicle of reports of work done because at the end of the day the ultimate responsibility for the opinion or expression of opinion on the group audit lies with the group auditor they must get involved they must get involved in even the component auditors work so but what are the levels of their significant involvement and how should they go about it like in the letter of instruction too they might have let the component auditors know that okay in this aspect of work especially maybe the high risk area of components activity that they will like to get involved maybe in a meeting maybe conclusion meeting audit exit meeting and the like they may like to be there and the like so specifically and in detail what at the level of involvement that group auditor must get themselves prepared for and get involved in when it comes to component auditors work material misstatements or material areas risky areas they must pinpoint it 
and discuss it with component auditor so that by the time they are executing they will lay it at art that those areas must not be overlooked and thorough audit work must be conducted on them they must review component auditors documentation audit files they must review it seriously and they must ask questions they must be able to ask component auditors question because at the end of the day it's not the component auditor that is going to express the opinion it's going to be the group auditor so if they are going to express the opinion then they must at least know and understand what has been done they must evaluate further audit procedures too to be performed to address the risk area that they've stated so they must be able to evaluate it they must be able to ask the component auditors question whether they've done it or they like or they've not done it what are the challenges in executing or carrying it out and the like they must consider whether it is necessary to be involved in this procedure or not if they want to get involved they should get involved and uh, if they think that okay the component auditor should just report back all well and good meeting with component management too they can decide to meet especially the SCT meeting to join the component auditor to meet the component management and to understand especially the area of disagreement that may occur in audit observation so that they can finalize it together and first and understand the mind of the component man management as regards those audit findings the review of component auditors overall audit strategy so how are the auditors component auditors going to carry out their audits so the group auditor should be able to contribute to hit their plan their strategy don't forget we've talked about the group APM so now we are talking about component APM that is the group auditor should get involved too as much as possible and practicable in developing the APM for the components risk assessment too you should be able to contribute especially when they have the understanding of the activities of the component organization so as much as practicable the group auditor must get involved as much as practicable and of course must carry on the component auditor so that they will be on the same page and will not be like they are overriding co-colleague but when they understand why they must get involved the journey becomes more easier so this is group audit and when we are talking about group audit too a similar audit is joint audit and we quickly want to go into joint audit now what is joint audit who are the joint auditor don't forget in group audit we establish one thing that the group engagement partner takes the lead and the leadership for group audit execution so joint audit too is another form of audit you will could use that word and joint audit is used basically when auditors come together but unlike the group audit in which the group auditor takes the lead for joint audits joint auditors are jointly liable so in joint audit the auditors are colleagues and must take responsibility for the opinion expressed so we can we cannot really say here that there is a boss like that of group audit they are jointly responsible for the leadership of the audit for the execution for the delivery and for the 
professional liability that could arise when we are talking about the audit project at hand. So joint audits is applicable in many situations and let me just mention a few like if there is a merger or acquisition it's possible that joint audit will be needed because different interests are coming together now and they want to defend their individual objective and interests so most likely they can require auditors to come from both sides to represent interests of the new management or the new investors so that is one of the reasons in which we are going to have joint audits coming together so the auditors work together as one to express a common opinion together so that means they must be able to reach a compromise agree between themselves the expression of independent opinion and they are jointly liable for the expression so far that they are going to make on the audit of that organization so joint audit has its advantages it has its disadvantages just like any other audit when we are talking about joint audit don't forget professionals are coming together from different backgrounds and the like so more resources will be made available the audit could get done easily and expertise also will be contributed so in their area of strength so they can easily meet deadline they can spread abroad easily and cover large geographical area and different branches because they are jointly working together and everybody can go to different places so that they get the job done on time of course it has some of its disadvantage too because they are coming together different expertise different knowledge different background if agreement is not well done and carried out it may be a constraint along the line who gets what done at whose expense what resources who put the resources down the availability of time expertise and the like it can be a major constraint how they manage themselves and the resources joint audit is an extra cost because ordinarily an auditor can be engaged and they will carry it out now two audit firms are coming together and there will be a bit of a an increased fee also if one of the auditors is negligent because they are jointly liable the two of them the joint auditors will be jointly liable professionally so professional liability will come against them and just because one of the parties one of the auditors are or is negligent in carrying out their home parts of audit execution so for this natural consequence and disadvantage of working jointly together it's important for joint auditor to have joint meetings joint planning meetings in which they strategize together and not only strategize in this case they must come together and brainstorm and document their brainstorming session they must document it fully document everything that they've agreed upon on how to execute the joint audit if not at the end of the day it could cause a lot of harm than good so summarizing group audit for group audit the group auditor takes the lead the group auditor must ensure that everything is well done the group auditor must be able to relate very well with the component auditor the group auditor must 
understand the group, its components, the subsidiaries, the associates, the joint venture within the enlarged entity and plan towards executing using joint using group audit planning or audit strategy memorandum rather so they must document it what are the risk area who is significant component why are they significant in the relationship who and who in the audit team is going to be responsible for the execution and evaluation of those risky areas how are they going to relate with the the component auditor how are they going to carry them along and obtain their cooperation the letter of instruction is important to bind them together to let the component auditor understand the mind of the group auditor what they need to be done how they should go about it when they are expected to report the deadline for the general group audit report and the consequence of not doing it on time and that they will want to get involved in the work of the component auditor and the level of involvement they should carry them along even from the onset and at the end of the day they should let the component auditor know that they will require of them reports of work performed they need to submit how they've executed their home part of the assignment which is going to be reviewed it's important that they review this to ensure at the end of the day misstatement and wrong expression of opinion is addressed and minimized to the barest minimum joint audit also as we are concluding we've spoken about it it's a situation in which two audit firms come together to express a singular opinion as it relates to an entity and one of the reasons that joint audit will be needful is when there is a merger or acquisition or is ongoing and different interests are coming together and one of the requirements is that they would like to have their own auditor to look into the affairs of the organization so with these different sides we provide auditor or auditors so at the end of the day for the singular audit of an organization two or more firms of accountants will come together to express a singular opinion as to the truthfulness and fair presentation of the financial reports and the activity of the year under review and when this is done we we'll say that joint audit has taken place Bengalati here has been talking from Jijin's associate click subscription button don't forget to click notification button so that you can continue to receive timely notification when we release new video gjm associates like us comment engage us we are value to life we are value to your businesses